What's up, humans? Welcome to the Human Music Podcast. I'm Luke Rain. My co-hosts are Tesco and Rip Kinney, and we are all music producers, artists, and producer coaches. This show is where we discuss all things music production and interview amazing creatives about their origins, their process, and whatever else comes up. This week is episode 135, Luke Rain's Ecstatic Dance DJ Tour. It has been a while since we came at you with an episode. Thank you for your patience. Part of the reason was because I was on tour. And on this episode, we're going to talk about about my tour experience from setting up the tour dates, how to ask for gigs on a cold email, what kind of gigs to go for based on personal alignment, building community around music, the history, benefits, and caveats of playing ecstatic dances, planning a set versus playing freestyle, making a tour work financially, and finding how to not spend money where you can, and much more song of the week is this new mashup i just dropped it's gautier somebody that i used to know versus tribal trap by peace sign and uh you can check out the link down below for that it's available on my Bandcamp for purchase or on youtube where you can see the video or on my soundcloud and you can support our sponsors like my spice it up percussion and foley pack that i did with porch has over 2,000 percussion loops and one shots and a 50 rack instruments for ableton and reason so so spice up your drum tracks with these dope percussions and foley's. Tesco's Patreon is here also. We can go support our boy Tesco where you can get uh, educational content, project files, feedback, private lessons, and more. And then Producer Dojo, uh, that's where we all came from. It's a great learning community for producers with different levels that tailor to your needs and budget. You can watch free classes and our live podcasts on Dojo TV, purchase individual workshops from Bill Gates himself, or sign up for a coaching program with Dojo Max. All right, check us out at thehumanmusicpodcast.com. But forget everything else. You waited long enough for this episode. Let's get on into it. Hello, people of Earth. This is Tesco with... Rip Kenny and Trap Jesus, and you're listening to the uh, Human Music Podcast. Woo! Hmm. Human Music Podcast. I like it. We on. We uh, on, baby. What's up, your, humans? Mute yourself in Zoom. Oh, let's do that. My dude. <coughs> what's Yo. up humans yeehaw um, hopefully a ceiling over your head i mean I, you can see mine yeah. no lies yeah. here <laughs> yeah, this is, is definitely i am not outdoors this is not a zoom background i can even touch it for proof nice armpit unless you set that up outside Sick. ah that's the good stuff yeah that's how french of you Oh, yes. I haven't got armpit hair. Weird, huh? No. <laughs> no? That's not weird? Gotta stay warm, dude. You'd love Canada, man. Oh, You'd yeah, man. Well equipped. <laughs> well, well equipped. No, I would. I mean, it's cold enough in Seattle, homie. I don't need to be. I'm just saying, though, you got the neck covered. You got, oh, that's, that's you accurate. Got the underarms. Dude, oh, you yeah. T shirt it up in here, dude. Are we Ooh. live right now? We're live, baby. Hot damn. Hot diggity On the radio. Indeed. What's up? You're we got live. any humans in the chat? Let me go check the chat. What's up, Discord? Yeah, what's, what's good, Umans? What's up, Discord? Let's see. Ooh, yeah. Oh, shit. What up? Currently, nobody in the chat, but that's all good. <laughs> We've been gone a minute. <laughs> yeah, so literally, uh, everyone forgot. That'll happen. So, how y'all been? A lot's happened lately. Man, tell them why we've been gone. Yeah, Cause I've been on them. tour, bitches. Oh, oh snap! Had a neutronium Ooh. and Fentron. You know what we can make with this? Velocitinis. I mean, what was the word? He was thinking Velocitinis. Yeah, boy. he was thinking Velocitinis, and she was like, nah. That I mean, crazier shit? Yeah. Yeah. Aw, shit. Yeah, Wait, what's, what's wrong? You too old to party with the whole planet? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I am. I can do more than you and more, baby. <laughs> Something like oh, that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, not went on tour, y'all. I. Uh, 
I had a couple weeks of pretty intense events going on in Seattle. Did did some recording and a show and uh, some other things, and then uh, and then dipped out early March. Uh, went to Portland, Ashland, Oregon, down to Northern California, Arcata in Humboldt County. Humboldt, what's up? And then up to the mountains, Shasta, Shasta, California. That was beautiful. And then out to this little spot. Uh, y'all might have heard of Bend, Oregon. Evan, you, you heard ever of heard of that place that you're nope, sitting maybe right once now? Or twice. Nope, yeah, never got heard to it. hang out with this guy in person. Super fun. And then, uh, and then, uh, and then finished the tour in Eugene, Oregon, and then rolled out, saw my friend and my pops out on the coast. And so how many Portland. stops was that? How many stops? That sounded like a lot of stops. I mean, six, uh, six tour dates on the road and one in Seattle. So seven total. Um, but then I also like stopped back through Ashland, Oregon on my way back. Cause they had a sick party going on and, right. uh, and stopped, two places on the coast and then went back to Portland and did a workshop, which was really fun. So, nope. you know, it depends how you want to count it. You know, seven, seven shows, one workshop. I also did some other things to make it work. So yeah, I guess that's you what we're talking about this episode, huh? All about it. Cause I feel like in the, in the spirit of the ethos of this podcast, I'm sure many people that are trying to become professional or, you know, up their game in this stuff are thinking about playing shows and thinking about doing a tour, hopefully in some form, you know, and and I'm absolutely certain that many of those people want to know how you did it. How did I do it? How'd you get there? I got by with a little help from my friends. Right. How'd you, how how did you get paid? What did, how did, how did they pay you for these things? How did, Mm. how did you, how did you organize the logistics? Not exposure books. Yeah, no, no exposure Exposure books books can get exposure. Yeah. Right. You want some exposure? Just fucking open my trench coat. (laughs) (laughs) Indecent exposure. Hey, yo. How much indecent versus decent exposure was there on the tour? I mean, I got naked in public a few times. Dude, okay. did some cold plunges and some snowy rivers. Okay, no was, drunk streaking. I mean, it'd be hard for me to drunk streak without the alcohol that I don't drink. But, uh, yeah, so how did this tour come about? How yes. did it come about? Well, my good friend Val, who sometimes listens to the podcast. What's up, Val, if you're listening? Hi, Val. Um, she was like, yo... You got to come play in Portland. We've known each other for almost a year. I have never played Portland in the whole time we've known each other. And she was set on making it happen. So shouts out to good friendship. Uh, And she knows all the people that put together the dances in Portland. By the way, I should just like specify real quick asterisk this tour, not even an asterisk, just like important information. This tour was a an ecstatic dance DJ tour. So if y'all not familiar, ecstatic dance is a little different from a lot of types of gigs that a lot of people do. You know, it's most gigs are like at a bar. There's like multiple DJs on the lineup. You're lucky to get an opening slot. And then they like try to pay you as little as possible while trying to encourage you to bring everybody you know and their mom. Um, and, you know, I'm not against that. I've done a lot of shows like that. Um, But I like ecstatic dance. It's not at a bar. It's often like at a yoga studio or at a, at a, at a venue where nobody's drinking of some sort. Um, One of them I did was in a park in Portland. That was pretty sick. Um, Lovely. And had a, you know, had a really good time with it. I really like the ecstatic dance vibe because generally most ecstatic dances there's only one dj or maybe there's like a dj that's helping run it that like does the warm-up like before everybody arrives but then like everybody like gets in a circle the dj gets to like talk about their set and what the intentions are and like this is like the vibe i'm curating tonight so when you dance you think about that everybody showed up to dance you know it's not about talking on the dance so you know you've been at that show where your favorite artist is playing and somebody's like loud talking over the music right in front of you and he was like, yo, 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 take that shit outside, bro. I'm here for the music. So ecstatic dance does a really good job of that, curating an environment where people can just like, you know, 
really focus on the music, really show up to dance and move and have a good time. And then there's usually social time afterwards, which is super dope. So, so it's an ecstatic dance DJ tour. I did one in Seattle right before I left. Um, somebody else actually had the date and canceled it and I got, I got added on. So that was really cool. Got, got to make it a seven city tour instead of six. But then my homegirl was like, yo, I want you to play Portland. Linked me up on a Facebook chat with the, with the dude Tyson who runs the Portland Sunday dance. And that was uh, really easy. I had met him last year too, when I met this friend. So he was kind of familiar with me. We'd had a good interaction and, uh, and got to, got to, you know, figured out a date that worked for all of us. And it was March 5th and it was like, nice. Now that's on the calendar. And by the way, if I'm driving all the way to Oregon, from Washington, what's my, you know, is there any other places I should hit up, you know, maybe extend this a little, so I'm not just coming down for the weekend. And they were like, oh yeah, well, we know the people that run the dance in Eugene and the people that run it in Ashland. So here's their contact information and we'll, we'll, you know, start a thread with all of us just so, you know, they know that you're a good connection and started setting up those dates. And I was like, well, shit, if I'm going to be in Eugene, like Bend is actually really close to Eugene when it comes down to it. It's only a couple few hours away. Um, and I got my buddy Evan down there. So yeah. that's uh that's a double trouble good excuse to to I just like cold emailed Bend, you know, just like, hey, what's up? I Googled you and you guys have a dance and I want to DJ it. I'm gonna be doing these other cities. And then same thing with Arcata, California. I had heard I have some friends down there and I heard some uh, really good, you know, stories of how nice the scene is and how good the community is out there. Really good people and a really good venue and a really cool dude, Jake, that runs the venue called The Thing in Arcata, California. It's and a great name for a venue. Yeah, right. It's a really cool space, so too. It's like kind of like right on like the main like town square area. Like there's like a there's like a plaza that's a park and then a lot of cool little businesses around it. And he's got like one of the storefronts. So it's like an old school storefront where, you know, it's like, you know, you like walk in the door and there's like a display window on either side of you as you walk in. And the bottom is the dance floor. And then like there's stairs that go up and there's all this extra space that they've got like sectioned into different like art exhibits and like little areas to like sit on a couch and talk or like lay down and cuddle or they have like a tea table in the corner. It was super cool, really awesome place. And I just, you know, we had a couple of mutual friends on Facebook. I just reached out to this dude on Instagram and I was like, Hey, what's up? We've got some mutual friends. I'm going to be in the area. Do you have any dates open in this, in this, you know, timeline? And they did. Um, and then, so that gave me five dates on the road. And then um, my buddy DMT Tree, uh, he actually goes by Twerkaba now, his DJ name. And he was like, yo, you're going to be in Arcata. Shasta's pretty close. Did you, you know, hit up anybody there? I'm like, I didn't even know they had to dance. And he linked me with the dude. And the dude was like, oh, so sorry. Like, we're actually booked for, for that whole month. But maybe next time you come through. And then he hits me back. He's like, actually, somebody just canceled the date you wanted. It's yours. <laughs> So wow, a little bit of luck, a lot of help from my friends and, uh, and just the initiative to reach out and be like, Hey, you know, I do this, you know, I had some mixes, uh, recorded up on Mixcloud that I could send them and be like, here's examples of my work. So I think that's, you know, a good takeaway, you know, even if it's not like super crazy professional and like a full EPK or whatever, like having something where you can, you know, direct people to this is how I do what I want to do for you. You know, if, if you want to DJ, yeah. have examples of sets, you know, and if you yeah. have different kinds of sets, depending on the, you know, the situation, like, you know, if I was applying to like, you know, be an opener on a tour or a bar show or whatever, like I would have sent a completely different set, you know, but, you know, I've got some of each of those just ready on call and, uh, and was able to send those out to these places and they all liked my music and, and, uh, yeah, ended up being a really, a really good experience for me. And, um, yeah. Any, any more questions on like setting up the tour? Ooh, Trish is um, in Salem. What's up? Yeah. I'll definitely hit you up about that, Trish. I think it's, I think it's worth noting that you had a 100% success rate in hitting up these places. It's like, 
incredible in its own right. Yeah. Um, as like as far as like, let's see, what would people listen to this want to know? Like, what did you say in a cold email to have such a high success rate? Um, you know, just try to be really personable, and you know, reach out, say that I, you know, I heard, you know, this place has a has a good you know, has a good dance or, you know, talk about, you know, read their website and see if there's anything I really relate to and mention that just to show, you know, give show that you care about what they're actually doing and not just copy pasting an email to everybody trying to get a gig, you know, speak of, you know, with ecstatic dance, it's really like community oriented. So like talk about, I I talked about how I want to come meet their community and like offer, you know, offer my style of DJing to the community for their dance. And they responded really well to that. Um, And, you know, also just like, you know, asking if they have openings, you know, or if they even take outside DJs, because some of the spots I've, I've hit up since are like, Oh, Hey, thanks so much. But we actually, you know, don't take outside DJs. We just only use DJs from within our community, you know? So just like asking to see in and, then if you get a yes, you know, being really gracious and, you know, obviously, you know, showing your gratitude. And if you get a no, same thing, like show your gratitude for them even responding to your email. Yeah. Like um, I had reached out to Corvallis and they were like, yo, like, thanks so much. But we right now we only do it twice a month and we just have, you know, the same person DJ at every time because it's like we don't really have any money to pay anybody else. And so it makes more sense just have the person that already needs to get paid for like running the whole event, just work DJing into what they're doing anyways. And, um, you know, just being like, Hey, you know, thanks so much. I appreciate y'all. If I'm ever down in the area for when your dances, I'd love to join. And if you or anybody is coming up to Seattle, feel free. Here's my number. You already got my email. Feel free to reach out. Cause you know, I'd be happy to, you know, bridge the connection and, and introduce y'all to the community up here and, that's really a lot of what my intention was for it. You know, like I love DJing for people. So that was a big part of it. I love traveling and that was a big part of it and wanting to get, you know, paid to travel and DJ instead of, you know, my normal, uh, or I guess my previous, uh, normal of paying a bunch of money to travel, which is great. But, uh, I wanted to switch it up, but like also like a big part of my goal here was to like, build connections, build community, like bridge, bridge different communities together. You know, a lot of these people might not know anybody in Seattle or at least not anybody, you know, in this kind of community, this kind of culture and scene in Seattle and being like, Hey, if any of y'all are ever up, here's my number. Here's my contact. Please hit me up. I'll introduce you to people up here. And, you know, and all that, like is under the umbrella of like stuff that's really authentic to me. So I think that's a really important thing to talk about is like, what's really authentic to the listener. Like when any of our humans want to set up shows or a tour, like ask yourself, like, where am I aligned? Where does my music that I actually want to play feel like getting played? You know, is it at an ecstatic dance? Is it at a renegade party in the forest? Is it, at an underground rave? Is it at a festival? Like, where do I see myself being, you know, being the most effective and being the most at home and asking like, what, what can I do to align myself with my values? And for me, ecstatic dance is really big uh, in my life, just as a, as something I like to do a lot. And I found out I really like to DJ it. I like being really eclectic with my style and the uh, as Evan got to experience, like you, know, you start completely chill, slowly ramp it up to like some pretty chill, and then like ramp it up to some like kind of hype, and then ramp it up to some super hype, and then ramp it back down. And people will follow you through all sorts of genres and styles and energies and emotions, which I really dig because personally, I don't like. DJing sets that are like one note like hey it's just this genre for an hour or two um it's my style some people love sticking to a style for an hour and know how to be you know eclectic inside of that but Hmm. 
I like I like this vibe of being really eclectic. And I found out that community and culture wise and music wise, this particular modality really supports what I want to do and I want to support it back. So finding that mutual benefit where it's like, hey, I can come do this, provide your community with an amazing experience and then and then, you know, also get provided with enough abundance to keep my road trip going. Yeah, I think that bears repeating that like you didn't like think of this lane as like, oh, like this could be something I could, you know, have a profitable tour in. It's like, no, like playing an ecstatic dance specifically is like you're you're built for it. Like not only are you tuned in to like the community and like what they want and how like they approach the event but like you your interests and tastes are legitimately aligned with it right Mm -hmm. and seeing seeing you play one of them i got the pleasure to see you play one of these events It, it became abundantly clear that like you really are built for it and i think that anyone listening to this should take note of like how finding the thing and the community that is like built into like what you do and what you like and and how you you know, how you are as a person like that can all align really well in a powerful way to like actually be something that like it, it comes naturally to you to deliver at a high level in this format and i think that that's that's like critical because it just makes everything work and and the coolest part too is that like because like it's kind of a um it's it's kind of an emerging like format for dance music in some ways i I think there's a lot of people listening to this that probably never have even heard of ecstatic dance before this or or haven't been to one i know i was in the category of having heard about it from you many times but haven't been to one right so like you found something that is like on its way into the public eye and i think that because you found it through truly just like your interest and your tastes that that in the long term is going to serve you really well and so i think that's something that everyone should really take away from this amen amen that's cool man it's easy to like get caught up in thinking that clubs and stuff and and a very specific like what's hot is the only thing that's around but it's cool. There's always like little communities like that. And it's, it's dope that you found yours. And it goes to show that like even with a smaller community, you can still go and like book tours. It's really all about connecting with that community everywhere you go and, and building it up. And like, yeah, it's cool. Yeah. I've heard people like talk about like, you know, some musicians are like trying to be as accessible as possible, which is dope. But other musicians just like, no, I'm going to be as niche as possible. Like, I'm going to like, I'm only doing like Celtic folk music. And there's only so many people doing Celtic folk music. So all the Celtic folk music, anything in this region, anybody who wants anything like that is going to hit me up. And I, because I've built myself into this authentic niche of this is what I love. This is what I want to do. Instead of trying to like wash it out and be like, I can be anywhere, but then you're never the perfect fit for anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, so like really like really feeling into your own authenticity, like with the music you make, how you present it, where you want to present it. And yeah. Do you feel like doing more events like that is kind of shaping the type of music you're writing? Absolutely. Um, It's kind of given me like finding ecstatic dance and finding out like I, I already knew I was a really eclectic creator. You know, it's kind of why I have like, oh, I do like the Trap Jesus thing. So I can like make hip hop beats over here for rappers, even if it's not like what I would put out as, you know, my own personal music as Luke Rain. But then like, you know, Luke Rain is pretty fucking eclectic, too. And I was like, damn, like some people say I should like hone in and just focus on one thing. So I'm known for just doing glitch hop or just doing halftime bass or whatever. And it's like, yeah, but that doesn't feel authentic to me either to just do one thing and like every time i've tried to like shut off one faucet the rest shut off too 
you know yeah. i just got to kind of let my creativity roll and like let get a spark and roll through the songwriting process so like getting to go to these ecstatic dance events and see every week you show up it's a completely different vibe and the same audience is down to go on the ride and like much more it's like not like i showed up for this specific thing i need to headbang or i need to you know do footwork or whatever it's like yo i showed up to see what happens and explore how i feel like moving based on whatever music happens and so it's it's really nice and then i've even gotten to take that to like shows that were more like a festival or whatever where most people are playing you know the whole set's drum and bass or the whole set's dubstep or the whole set's house and then i come through with this weird eclectic set and for sure there was a lot of people that were like i was just looking for house i followed it around the festival wherever whatever stage had house i followed it but a lot of people came up to me after like weren't you the dude on that one stage dude i loved your set man like i loved how many genres you hit i really needed that tonight and so like really gave me the confidence, like, right, like I can just be authentic to me and then people will respond. And to answer your question, yeah. Tesco, like, yeah, like I'm noticing that I had these ideas of like what would get me booked or what would, you know, grab the people's attention in like what I was writing. And now that I've seen this kind of audience and experience this kind of audience that like is down for whatever. I'm just like writing what I want. Some of it's like way, most of it's way chiller <laughs> than I used to try to write in much more, much more smooth and melodic and less like trying to make people head bang. And every once in a while, a banger still comes out and that's dope, but it came out like authentically, not because I was trying to force it. And now it sounds like it's not forced. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah, man. That's cool. It's like, I remember like trying to reach that point before and and now it's like it's cool because you it just takes time to get there and it just takes trying a bunch of shit and it's cool to see your evolution and kind of where you ended up because like just like evan i heard of it through you am not that knowledgeable on ecstatic dance but it sounds sick and it's it's cool that you're like you're fucking you're rolling with that and like I don't know. The whole like package is coming together. Everything is like maturing together. Uh, like I've been feeling a bit that way too. And it sounds like that from, from your experience where like all the pieces are falling in the right place. Now it's like Tetris when you like get a line and then it like, fucking, you get the points for it or whatever. Yeah. It's cool. Now there's been a lot of like blocks stacked up and like the gaps are filling in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, um, had a had a question over here asking if it was a solo trip or if I traveled with anybody, and if so, would that have changed things? It was a solo trip. Um, <clears throat> one leg, I did have a buddy who needed a ride to the next city I was going to, um, so I got some gas money for that. That was dope. Shouts out to my friend Kurt. He's walking across Portugal now. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, right? But... Uh, <laughs> But yeah, Absolutely. other than that, it was a solo trip and it definitely would have changed things. You know, I mean, on the one hand, it would have been cool to have somebody, you know, to be on the road with, to talk to during a road trip or whatever. But, you know, I'm pretty good by myself and, you know, I can call a friend. I always do that. Who wants to be a millionaire? Phone a friend on the middle of a road trip unless you're out in the middle of nowhere. But, you know, make sure to download a few podcasts and, and songs just in case. <laughs> um, and then, uh, yeah, like... Uh, the modality of ecstatic dance, almost all of them only have one DJ. It's like one set, you know, it's maybe like 90 minutes or two hours set for the night and it's just one DJ. So like if I had somebody else, it would have been a completely different like style. Like who else would I have brought? What would they have even done on the trip? You know, it's a good question. But then was it a solo trip? Like not really, because most of the places I went, I visited friends. Like, you know, I had... um my friend in Portland, who was the spark for the whole trip, shouts out to Val again. And then in Ashland, like I had met like a friend of a friend at a party in Seattle. And she was like, oh, you're coming to Ashland? I live in Ashland. I have an extra place for you to stay. Oh, sick. You know, so I got to like visit her and make, you know, have that new friend that I met. And then um, in Arcata, I had a friend who was like, you know, I, I live in this like small little like cabin next to the redwoods. <laughs> uh, 
and there's not really room for you, but you could totally like park your car, car camp on the property. There's plenty of room to park. So you can just like, you know, kick it. And uh, we'll get back to this a little later, but I ended up recording a couple of songs with her, which was really cool. I'm getting paid for that. And so shouts out to Hallie, Soleil Faye, dope artist. Um, Going to have her two, her first two like official studio recordings out uh, later this spring. And, um, and then, you know, uh, I didn't really have a place to stay in Shasta and it was really cold. So I didn't want to car camp. So I just like drove back to Ashland to the same, <laughs> the same dope house I had before. Uh, and then, you know, Bend got to stay with Rip Kenny and Eugene did another like car camping outside the dude's house who runs the dance and, you know, everywhere else after that, I had a place to stay. And that's why I went there, whether it's like my, my dad's house or another friend's house. So like, you know, sort of solo, but sort of not. Cause like I planned it around, you know, love and opportunity and friendship and, you know, places to stay. And, you know, some of the places I just had to figure it out as I went, some of the places I already had the place to stay lined up. And I think that's another like thing, like when we're asking like how to make a tour financially work, like one, I know I've heard a lot of people that like save money and then just like plan on losing money on the tour and like, got to like roll out, you know, like, okay, cool. We're going to do it anyways. We're going to lose some money, but it's okay. We're going to get our name out there and we're going to get contacts. We're going to build our email list. And this is an investment. And I dig that. Um, but also like asking, like, is there a way we can do this for cheaper? Like, is there any place we could stay for free along the tour? Do we have any love so we don't have to like buy a hotel or an Airbnb along the way? Um, can we get a vehicle that we can, that we can sleep in? Like maybe, you know, maybe it would make more sense just like rent an RV or a bus or something for the tour. If you've got enough people to make it worth that, or do you got a car that you can throw a camping pad and a sleeping bag in the back of like I did, you know, just, you know, where can I not spend money so that the money I'm making sustains the tour and pays my rent while I'm gone. And uh, yeah, I was able to do that, which is really sick. <laughs> And, oh, yeah, man. Yeah. And, um, you know, y'all asked about getting paid. Um, some of the places just paid in cash right at the end of the night. They're like, hey, a bunch of people paid in cash. Here's an envelope of cash. It's a couple hundred bucks. Thank you so much for playing. It's like sick. And yeah. other spots just Venmoed me about that amount. Uh, all the all the spots were like one of the spots base rate was a little lower. It was like 120 but then they had like, oh, well, if you came from far away, we'll pay you some gas money. And if you like are a producer and play original music, we'll give you a bonus, et cetera. Mm. So even that one ended up being a couple hundred That's bucks. Cool. Yeah, it was really cool, right? That's like a very high level like strategy to be paying DJs on. Like, I don't know that I've actually ever heard that. Like if you play. Play your if if you produce and you play your own music, we're actually yeah. People pay you are more. valuing original like, creativity. What? Yeah, right. What? That's fucking insane, dude. That's so cool. Yeah, I'm pumped about it. What was that place? That was Eugene, Oregon. That was my last stop at the tour. None of the other spots had thought of that. What was um, the place though? The actual spot in Eugene. The venue. It's called Wow Hall. Yeah. Wow. Shout out, wow. Fucking wow Hall. Yeah. Dog. Wow. Wow. wow to wow hall wow. shouts out paul who who runs it um did a great job everybody who ran the all at wow hall yeah you know he, he rents the space out the, out at wow hall some of the spots like the the place in seattle and the place in arcada like uh-huh. are like a dedicated like this is the spot ecstatic dance happens all the time the person who owns it is super into ecstatic dance that's one of the reasons they have the venue and other spots are like yo we rent this space every week and that's part of the reason why some of the places uh, around are not able to pay as much is because they're you know they're renting the spot just once a week to go do it and they have a lot of overhead so you know but uh everything you know everything worked well with all the payment um you know everybody was happy to pay me paid on time some of the places even tipped me because you know maybe they had more people than they expected or um, you know, got some extra cash donations at the end. People were like, yo, this is for the DJ, which is super sick. Shouts out to all the people that that dropped some extra cash. Yeah, that's very cool. And yeah, a lot of the time, Ecstatic Dance is like, 
they'll have like a suggested donation and then like you know people can pay a little more or a little less depending on need or uh or availability and uh so shouts out to the people that paid a little extra so that i could get paid a little extra and uh yeah and so yeah, that's sick yeah so made made some pretty decent money especially for like you know my experience in djing you know I know that like if you're the headliner, you get money. And if you're like the wedding DJ and running everything for a whole day, you get paid a lot of money. But like normally, you know, up and coming entertainers are usually like left fighting over the scraps. You know, I mean, I've got some gigs coming up where it's like, oh, yeah, this one's like 75 bucks or oh, this is a fundraiser. So nobody's getting paid. And there's still gigs I want to do. Not complaining, but it is nice to know that there are certain gigs and certain possibilities where i can feel like my my hard work and my skills were appreciated more but you yeah, know, then mean, again those other ones up, are like shit the... where there's a ton of djs playing at least like four djs at one of them and you know i'm opening for ill gates so like clearly he's the draw you know <laughs> he's the reason there's a whole night and he's traveling in from out of town and all that so it makes sense to uh to you know that he's going to get most of the money but it also you know yeah yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say like the, honestly that the, that's it's fucking incredible how like well that they actually respected your art and how much they did pay you like it's honestly respectable and commendable for all these places because I would have to assume that a lot of them didn't actually know how many people were gonna show up if they were gonna make money or not and they a lot of them probably didn't have any experience with you or, you know, like a DJ of your style coming in and playing their ecstatic dance, which is typically kind of a small community, maybe even like someone that doesn't have DJ experience, like coming in, like they all paid you like really well, like more than like direct support for glitch mob at Q, like definitely like one of the, if not the, most well-respected clubs in downtown Seattle. Like you got paid more, more, more than they, they paid for that slot that at all of those stops. Yeah. It's fucking incredible, dude. It's so cool. That's one of the good things about ecstatic dance is like, there's this built in audience who wants to come dance and be around community and wants this style of dance. And it's like, I've definitely seen that like, oh, if I've seen this DJ before, maybe people are a little more likely to make sure they show up. But like in general, there's like in the community, there's going to be a certain amount of people that show up every week just because they need to go dance. And yeah, yeah, exactly. They love it and they want to be around the community and they want to be, you know, get, get the opportunity to move their body in a safe space. And, you know, so it makes sense that, that this, you know, these venues are able to like more accurately gauge like how many people are going to come out. And often like these aren't necessarily like money making venue ventures where it's like, Oh, we've got this venue and we've got all this overhead and we've got to, you know, pay all these, the bartenders and pay the, the door people and all this stuff. Like a lot of the positions are just volunteer run. Like whoever's taking tickets at the door might just do that every week so that they can save 20 bucks on the dance and, and get to help their community you know and so it's like you know they there's a little more you know and plus like we said it's only one dj you're the you're the headliner so it makes sense but you know just also just to throw this out there with a lot of you know hey i'm saying how good of a thing this is make sure if you want to uh if you want to apply to dj ecstatic dances like make sure you show up at ecstatic dances and know what you're actually getting yourself into because it's a completely different style of djing you have to have like different types of music that will like fit the different roles um if you're interested in this like look up the five rhythms um and like uh the, I'm just gonna throw it out yeah. there if if you haven't heard of ecstatic dance before tonight don't apply to dj one like it's you you got you would have to go and put in the effort to actually really understand what they're looking for and how it works and the flow and like there's it's it's definitely nuanced enough that you if if you thought you could just show up and play music like it, it would be a disservice to that community you'd have to like 
definitely, if this sounds interesting to you, like go find the local spot that does it and go for three months straight before asking to play one. It is a separate vibe. Yeah. My community in Seattle kind of has a, it's not like a hard rule, but it's kind of a standing rule of, you know, if you, you can play, you can sign up to play, but we prefer that you've been like coming around for like six months or so yeah. before you even ask. Yeah. It's just like showing that up. It's like, just so you sense. know, so we know that you know what we're looking for, you know, like what yeah. the style is and how to, how to organize your set. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, just wanted to throw that out there as somebody that loves ecstatic dance and has talked to some of these promoters on the tour and having them be like, yo, just to make sure, like, before we start tonight, you actually know how to do, like, how to set up the playlist so that it, like, makes sense for this, right? Because we had some people mm -hmm. that said they knew how the, the other month and clearly had no idea what they're doing and just came in and played techno for an hour and a half. <laughs> and yeah. we were just like, oh, there was yeah. no, there was no rise, there was no fall. It was just up here the whole time. And, and Luke's like, not only stop. do I know, not only do I know how to do this very well, I'm also going to have a well thought out intention for the set that I'm going to walk around and very nicely and slowly with my radio DJ voice, like bring everyone into the conversation about like what you should be thinking about and how you should feel and like get, get, you know, just the perfect vibe set for what you're doing as if he, like I said, you were fucking built for this. Like, yeah, but I, like you really did nail it. And there is, there is a cherry on top of what you do in this, in this lane that, that like it clicked for me that like you're, you can provide at a higher level this experience than a lot of other people. Thank almost you. actually than anyone else that i know so thank you i'm man. curious uh to hear after this like first tour what's some stuff that you've picked up on that you want to do better for next time hmm. um good question well or or if there were any that prominent I... shows that like highlighted something for you. yeah thank you good questions um one of the things that i kind of went coming into the tour um I played my last set in Seattle and I noticed like partway through the dance, like people got a little tired and I talked with a DJ friend of mine about it afterwards and, you know, decided that on my tour, I need to spend like more time warming people up, you know? And so that led me to like restructure and re create new sets of playlists based on like how much energy I want the people to be expending during the song so i can like roll from like the really chill to the pretty chill like and it, it made it way easier to put these together so like doing more organization um and continuing to reorganize my my library into these lists of like energy level and i was talking about the five rhythms a bit earlier and that's like going from like flowing rhythms to staccato rhythms, to chaotic rhythms, back down to lyrical rhythm, down to stillness, where you can really just like let it all sink in at the end. So having playlists for each of these rhythms really helped. And then the bend dance that that Evan came to with me um, was the one dance that was like, hey, we try to do at least most of our dance with no lyrics in the music so that people can like be in on their own internal journey. And so I had to then make another set of these playlists and like only pull out the ones that had little to no vocals in them. And so that was cool. And now I have like multiple options. So I feel much better prepared for the next tour already. Um, mm. And then something I'd like to do better in general is like, I, I feel like I did this better at the end of the tour than the beginning was like, like tying the beginning and the end together with the way I'm like setting the intention I felt like I did that really well, but then also like bringing that back at the end. I felt like um, the second half of my tour, I did that really well, where like the tour, the whole tour, the dances were about like tapping into the dreams you want to achieve, what you want to manifest, like what you want to 
what you want to bring into this next year of your life as we're coming up on springtime, you know, kind of a new year in a lot of cultures. Like, so what do you want to manifest? And then at the end of the dances and the end of the tour, I started like asking people to share what those dreams are like, speak it into reality, speak it to your community. What are your dreams? What do you want to do? What do you want to bring about and a lot of people were like sharing a dream and then the next person would share and be like oh my god like my dream relates to that let's work together and so it was like really cool to get to see these like sparks flying in the community of like people wanting to like build off of each other's dreams and like and help each other and and manifest together which is really cool to see so i definitely want to want to be really intentional about doing more of that um and let's see is there anything else that I would really do differently? Maybe more like more guided meditation. I did on a couple of the stops, like the beginning and the end. Like in Bend, I, I began with a guided meditation during the first song. And I really liked that. Um, and there was, there was also like, I think Ashland at the beginning and the end, I did a guided meditation. And I really dug that and I want to do more of that. Um, that's something I've dabbled in a little bit over the past few months and a few of the events I've been doing. And, you know, it's having like the, you know, I'm already like coming up with the intention for the dance and setting that. And I can just like speak on that and like create this container that's like creating this journey for people. I want to really focus on continuing to do that and, and getting better and better at that part. Oh, yeah. That's dope, man. That's dope. Yeah, it's cool because, uh, you know, like we were saying earlier with time, the shit will just mature more and it'll become it'll become more of you. And as this ecstatic dance evolves too, like the community will become a bit more defined, uh, you know, for better or for worse. Yeah, but, uh, it, it's cool because it feels like you're kind of helping like shape what that is. It feels like your input has a lot of like value at this stage while this like new form is kind of being like thought up of i mean it's always evolving but just to give you a little history like um ecstatic dance as a concept is probably close to like 50 years old so it's like been like slowly building for a hot minute mm -hmm. and like people have been um I think ecstatic dance as a concept started in Hawaii and the five rhythms started in New York, like both in the seventies and then have kind of like met in the middle and combined. And now it's like a worldwide phenomenon. And it's still not like super mainstream, obviously, but pretty much like if anybody's interested in this, like no matter where you live, there will almost for sure be an ecstatic dance within driving distance of you. Um, there's, you know, it's all over the place, you know, as, as y'all can see, I like, all over i didn't even hit all of the ones in oregon you know i hit four in oregon and there's like you know even some of these cities i didn't even hit the only they have another one like i hit the maybe i hit the tuesday dance but there's also a sunday dance or vice versa and you know it's like oh and that town right over there has one on a different day um so there's there's like there's a fair amount of this going on um and I highly recommend it. It's my favorite shit. I don't know if it's everybody's cup of tea, but it's very much for me. So I recommend everybody to at least at least checking it out if it at all tickles your interest. Yeah. That's really cool, man. So I'm looking deeper into this or a bit. I just typed in five rhythms to look into later. But this is like I thought it was just like five actual rhythms but this is like a deeper concept and i'd love for you to dive a bit deeper into this for people that might not know it seems like it's a whole like movement and kind of dancing meditation style that originated in new york yeah so to my understanding like i'm trying to remember her name off top it's probably sitting there on that wiki article you got a gabriel roth yeah and yeah she's like like came up with this like idea of how to do the dance like how do I get people into it? Like, you know, it's like, you, you know, you come, you sometimes go to a show, somebody starts with some super hard music right away, but like the crowd is just clearly not ready to move that much. And so people kind of like hang out in the back and like the super intense music is playing. People just like chill. It's cause like their bodies aren't ready for it, which is kind of like, it's giving me a new appreciation for the whole concept of like playing to your time slot. 
You know, like I still think like if they hired you and especially if you're a producer, if they hired you as a producer to DJ, like play your shit, you know, like let the people who showed up know what you do because you're looking for fans. Right. But it does give me more of an appreciation for like playing chill stuff early to like warm people up, even if it's like just a few songs to get people slowly vibey moving at the beginning, if you're the opener of the openers for the night, just like ease people into movement. And that's the whole idea of the five rhythms. It starts off with flowing movement. And often it'll even start like even chiller than that with like a meditation song. You know, it's just like a lot of a lot of dances in five rhythms and ecstatic dance will like everybody will start out like laying on the floor if there's if it's a good clean space for that. Um when I did the dance in the park in early March in Portland, Oregon, nobody started out laying on the ground at all. <laughs> and I decided to kind of bump it right into the it was still flowy, but it was like beats right away. I played some like ninety BPM like down tempo tribally stuff and then moved it into some like, you know, Moombatani stuff after you know, it's like got them moving right away but still easily accessible like not like straight into dubstep straight into trap straight into house you know like ease them up into it so the flowing rhythm is first and just like find like ask yourself like what could i just like flow to a lot more horizontal to to speak it in dojo terms like horizontal instead of vertical tracks where the whole track is more horizontal at first and maybe there's beats maybe start with like less drums and then work in slightly more intense drums and beef that up a little bit and um and get into then what's called the staccato rhythm which is more like house music it's like okay we're warmed up now let's give people like an easy beat to bounce to you know like house music is classic for that of course right like it's energetic but it's also not rhythmically super complex you know, he's hitting you, you know, down, up, down, up, right? Giving you, giving you that easy bounce. Um, and then that really, that really fully warms people up. And then you get into the third section, which is chaotic. And the chaotic section, that's where you drop your dubstep, your trap, your, you know, whatever. That's where, that's where I drop that. Other DJs will interpret that differently. But it's like where, where people can get wild and start doing like different types of movements in the straight like house bounce. That is most of what that that rhythm inspires and get that chaotic. So you like really get to fully explore your body. And that's like usually like the peak of the wave. And then it starts to roll over and you go into the fourth section, which is called lyrical. And that could mean like more more vocals. But I think it's also like melodic and, you know like kind of like the songs that kind of tell a story and it kind of starts chilling out again. And then at the end, it gives you stillness, like a song or two at least of just like some meditation music. So you can like fully like drop in, integrate your experience, um, you know, get back in touch with yourself. You know, if you've been dancing with other people, like come back to solo or maybe, you know, you want to lay, lay down and cuddle with somebody you were dancing with. I've seen that happen a lot too. Um, and yeah, just having that wave where it starts you really easy to get into the dance, slowly builds you up into dancing as hard as you can, and then like rolls you back down to like give you a nice soft landing at the end of the night, which is really nice. Like, so many sets are like, y'all fucking ready to rock? Bleah! And then give you that for an hour with maybe that one song that's like <clears throat> kind of chill out. <laughs> And then right back into full crazy mode, right? And that's great, especially depending on the night. You know, if you're like at Base Canyon, you know, that's probably exactly what people want from you, you know? But I like, you know, since this is like ecstatic dance is like not just one set in a night of all the sets and people will like show up and leave as they want to go go get a snack go lay down in the grass whatever like this is more like a, a whole curated experience for a couple of hours where you're taking this group of people on the whole journey like start them chill bring them up let them go crazy set them back down it's dope man mm. yeah and yeah 
it's really rewarding. I really love the the one of my favorite parts about ecstatic dance is just like the actual community. Like similar for like producer dojo. Like one of my favorite parts about it, aside from the great learning and all that, it's just the people. The people are so cool here. People are nice. They want to make friends. They want to help each other. You know, like and that's what makes it such a good community. And similar in ecstatic dance, it's like people are showing up to find cool people to know and have Mm. this cool shared experience. And yeah. So if anybody's out there like looking for some more cool weirdos or trippy hippies or whatever, and you're in your neck of the woods, Google ecstatic dance and see what happens. That's cool, man. That's how basically every movement starts off before it gets overtaken by like the mainstream or it gets too popular and moves away from the initial cause. Just like, like-minded people come together. Hey, and, all fair and, and all's fair and Warren Bro step. Thanks. <laughs> and uh, you know, it's it's like so simple, but I've seen and gone to a lot of nights that are kind of your typical nights that don't end up being very successful. And I think the difference in between events that work and don't and the ones that really shine through and the ones that have an audience, like you said, that wants to go and meet people is actually making that experience and thinking of it from the audience's perspective first and not thinking about, Oh, I know these dope bangers or I just produced this track this month and it's so sick. I have to play it versus like everything you've said too, I'm noticing is very intentional and in terms of like serving the audience and making it a special night for them and making it so that they can ease into the dance and they can get into the into the uh set because you prepared it you're gonna love it obviously you're gonna think it's dope but to have that awareness to think of it from the other side and 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 same with like the the promoters to sound very aware in terms of like compensating you and making sure the event is run smoothly for everybody and when you boil it down that's really like the simple shit that it all comes down to is just can you bring people together to have a good time yeah and music is just a part of that and if you could do that your music will be there amen 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 oh speaking amen. of which you mentioned something like planning the sets out that's another thing i wanted to mention when you're asking me about like what went well mm-hmm. part of what really went well was me getting away from having like a fully planned out set like over the past few months i've been like playing a bunch of sets in seattle and a few friends mentioned to me specifically like yo you freestyled that set that's one of my favorite sets of yours i think i liked it even better than the one you planned out last month and recognizing that and thinking about that and like okay well i spent hours and hours and hours ordering exactly how I was going to do this and like dialing in exactly what my transition was going to be. And the set worked great. But then the ones where I was just like, I've got all this, you know, well cue pointed, it's put in playlists based on mood or genre or energy level. And I can just like read the audience and be like, you know what? They need one more song at this level. They're not ready to jump up yet let me drop one more song at this tempo before I speed it up or before I go, you know, let me give them one more house song before I drop it into halftime or, Ooh, I had one more house song playing, but they're clearly ready to go to this next rhythm. Let me scratch that track and pick a different one. Like just being able to like really be present and read the audience and let my preparation uh, that isn't making a specific set list, let all that other preparation that we do as DJs, be my preparation and my presence really gets to shine at that point. Like get to like really read the audience, which I really like. That's something I want to, I want to keep doing more. Mm. So I've heard, yeah. I've heard people say that like, Oh yeah. The, the real thing about being a DJ aside from like bringing good music is like reading the audience and figuring out what's going to work yeah. in this room at this moment. And I think I'm really starting to get that. At least for yeah. for the types of crowds I know now. Yeah. And I mean, speaking from the show that I went to, like, everyone there fucking loved it. Like, like you definitely delivered at a level much higher than they had seen or, or were expecting or whatever. Like, you could tell everyone was blown away by how well you did. 
Um, and you've dropped a lot of really fantastic knowledge nuggets for the homies tonight. Anything else you want to touch on? Any parting thoughts? Yeah. Um, ask yourself, like, if you want to go on a tour, what other skills do you have that you could possibly monetize on the tour? Um, like... Uh, when I was in Articata, California, I had a friend of mine who I met at a festival last year through some friends and I produced some tracks for them when they were up in Seattle. And she heard those and was like, I love the way you did that. I want to come to Seattle in the summer and, and hire you to do that for me. And then I happened to be going to her city and was like, Hey, you want to work while I'm there? And she's like, fuck yeah. So I got paid. I was going to be in the town anyways during this time and trying to figure out what to do for five days I had off in between gigs and I found somebody that wanted the services I have anyways that wanted to pay for them anyways and just brought them to her. And that really helped make, uh, make it work financially. Um, and then, uh, and then I'm also like, I have a workshop that I've been, you know, about creativity and about how to live a more creative life. And, um, I offered that when I was in Portland and I, you know, I, I had the benefit of like coming back around to Portland as the first and then the last stop on my tour. And so I got to give this workshop. I hit up everybody that I had met and was like, Hey, this time, this place, I'm doing this workshop. And like seven people came through and, you know, paid me to teach them a bunch of stuff for a couple of hours. And, you know, it's like, another half a another half a show <laughs> that I played basically monetarily. And then now that I have contacts in all these cities, next time I roll through, even if I can't get a DJ gig, you know, even if it doesn't line to get a DJ gig, I could always like set up a workshop and I've got friends. Maybe I can do it in one of their living rooms for free and let them just like come for free in exchange for let me use their living room. Right. Like, so like finding like, okay, yes, I've got these, tour dates where the, I'm going to get paid as a DJ, but also thinking, is there anything else I can offer? I don't know. Do you have like carpentry skills? So you like want to work on a farm? Maybe you could stay like at a woofing farm for, <laughs> for a while. Like there's all these options, of what you could do to what make is your, a woofing farm. Oh, it's like world organization of organic farms. So like these people okay. who like want to learn farm skills, well, like, like certain farms will have like, Oh, you can like, here's a place you can stay. And we'll teach you about it in exchange for working on the farm. You'll get like a free room and board and a bunch of knowledge. And you'll like stay here, pick an amount of time, like a month or three or whatever. And like you'll yeah. work on this farm and then you can like go on your way. And, you know, there's a lot. What I'm saying is there's a lot of different options for how to travel, for how to monetize. And so just like keep your creative brain open to that. Not just I need to play this type of show. I need to do this. And this is all I can do. Like ask yourself yeah. like how can i spend less money how can i make more money and that can really make a tour work for you yeah that's that's that. really really great advice i was hoping a woofing farm had something to do with dogs where i you Me know too, maybe dude. there's just a bunch of dogs running around i, I mean to to that, that I gotta have at least one dog that's a woofing woofing farm and also the mentioned in the chat a woofer farm oh uh, yeah potentially make speakers or cabinets gross horns I mean, also yeah, would be very seeds. very cool yeah on this on you the on the the, cone. the woofer the woofer bush yeah <laughs> the woofer bush well Man, yeah. yeah i really like that that last piece man i i, I want to highlight that like creativity really ex extends to every single part of the process from like planning the set to how are you going to choose to connect with people to you doing your guided meditation to figuring out where the fuck you're going to stay? All of that, like, it just takes the thinking about it and the the strategic kind of planning and, and just getting creative with it, man. Yeah. I love that. I love that point. Yeah. Amen. Thank you very much. Amen. And uh, thank you, thank humans. You. Appreciate all y'all in the chiz at beautiful uh, everybody beautiful that people. uh tapped in with us tonight man yeah, we had a Appreciate good crowd everybody. in there start especially when we started out and we we're like crickets all right nobody's here but y'all showed up we love you yeah thank you we so much Big time. Thank you so much for all the the thoughts the questions the the, the especially the, the gifts Fives. and things 
Yeah, all the vibes. Mm. Especially the, yes. the gifts. Oh, and, yeah. And the memes. Well, all right, humans. Till next time, we give you a peace and a peace among worlds. Haha. <laughs> bye bye. See you guys. I like it. All right, humans, thanks so much for being here with us. Highly appreciate you. Thanks for waiting for this episode. Thanks for being here when we dropped it. And again, yo, check out that song of the week. I'm really proud of this one. I've been playing this. Actually, I made it to open for Ill Gates in uh, in 2021, and I had just gone through a breakup. So to somebody that you used to know, Vibe is a uh, <laughs> is real cathartic for me at the time, and hopefully it'll be cathartic for you too listening to it. You know, dope bass beat or oh, with a class classic breakup song on top of it um and then uh support our sponsors again go get my spice it up percussion and foley pack these are super useful loops and one shots that you can just drag and drop and warp into your into your songs and just give you that groove or that accent that you're looking for um and tesco's patreon go support him he's such a good coach he's uh he's got some students that are making some big strides you can be one of them and producer dojo you know it's the it's the community if you want to be in a whole community you can you know be there just for dojo tv if you want some free content you can get individual workshops from ill gates or get a whole coaching program with dojo max and get a monthly lesson track feedback and a whole bunch more goodies so holler at us at the human music podcast.com if you need to find any of that stuff there's links down below for everything and of course peace and peace among worlds